I had a, a really funny intro, but uh, I didn't want to pull a Cody Leach and spoil the movie for everybody by, you know, saying anything at all. Hey everybody, it's Drewski McGillicuddy, and today we're going to talk about the new 2021 film Malignant from James Wan, because nobody else will seem to shut the fuck up about it, but hey, whatever takes the focus off of Halloween Kills is what I say, because god damn it, just shut the fuck up about Halloween Kills already, okay? It's not even out yet, already I don't want to fucking see it because of you fucking people, and by you people, I mean you fucking assholes over in Keller Flicks. Just shut the fuck up! Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, okay? We're not talking about that, we're talking about Malignant, like I said. Now, before we get started, I did watch Cody Leach's review, and apparently he got a lot of flack because he supposedly spoiled the movie for some people just by saying that he figured out the twist 40 minutes into the movie. Whereas I say, that's, that's pretty sad. That's pretty sad because, I mean, they kind of like give it away in the fucking opening credits. Like, if you look, if you're a fucking eagle-eyed viewer such as myself and the secretary, plus we're very smart people and we could put two and two together. And that's what we did. So within the first 10 minutes, we figured it out. But it was because we were looking for it because Cody Leach totally spoiled the movie by telling us there was a twist. If we wouldn't have known there was a twist, we wouldn't have been looking for it. No, I'm kidding. That's, that's bullshit. Uh, it's a James Wan movie. Like He's like M. Night Shyamalan. He has twists in his movie. Look at the original Saw, for Christ's sake. And then, you know, there was kind of twists and turns in the Insidious movies. Uh, I haven't seen his Fast and Furious or his Aquaman. But as far as his horror goes, I've seen all of his horror films. And I love pretty much all of his horror films. Uh, did I love this though? I don't, I don't really, I don't really know. I mean, the fucking score was incredible. Like I thought my fucking windows were going to shatter. I, I kept having to turn it down because like it was an ambient, like an ambient noise with some kind of metal. I don't like, they, it's like, it wasn't guitars. I don't know what, the, I don't know how the fuck they did the score or what fucking instruments they used, but the score stood out and it was incredible and I, I I didn't look but I feel like it's the same person that did like the score for the Saw movies or maybe James Wan uses the same composer for all of his movies because they all it, it just had that James Wan sound to it if that makes any sense to you but anyway let's talk about the movie Madison is uh this woman and she's got this piece of shit boyfriend and some shit had happened and then some shit starts happening because of the shit that had happened. See, I, I, I don't want to spoil the movie because if I say any slight little thing, people will be like, oh no, he spoiled it. Even though I'm pretty sure everybody has seen the movie by now. So they know what's going on. They know that whatever. But like, it didn't dawn on me right when the beginning of the movie happened because I was so pissed off about what I had witnessed. And I was like, this is fucking are you serious why is this movie trying to piss me off right off the bat okay and then you know i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about so there are a lot of really cool kills in this movie there's a lot of really cool sequences uh just like creepy like the very beginning of the movie there's like some really good like And, you know, unfortunately, I didn't go watch this movie in the theater. I feel like I, I would have had a more immersed experience in the theater. I bet the sound would have even been better. Because I have a pretty decent sound system with my fancy TV. But, ain't nothing replacing the theater sound system. Now, like Cody Leach brought up uh, about the... I guess he was talking about The Conjuring. But, you know... Here I am in my living room, and my bedroom door is off the living room, and it's it's cracked a little bit. 
And every time I looked over, it seemed like the door was open a little bit more, and there was like something. Is it? Is that? Is that? Is that my uh, pile of clothes on my dresser, or is that a monster getting ready to come out and scare me? So it had that element to it. If if that makes any sense to you, while I'm watching the movie, I'm fucking psyching my fucking self out in my own goddamn house, and there's there's nothing there except a fucking cat that keeps fucking increasingly open the door every time he comes in and out of the bedroom. And then it was probably him on top of my pile of clothes moving around is why I kept thinking, oh shit. But the, anyway, what the fuck are we even doing here? We're supposed to be reviewing a movie. So this thing has happened to Maddie, all right? She's got an abusive relationship, but that gets taken care of right off the bat. I mean, I guess that's not a spoiler. I mean, people are going to start dying in the movie, right? So people are dying in the movie. And she's seeing it as if she were there. Not like she's seeing it through the eyes of someone else. Like she's standing in the room, witnessing all this stuff happen. And you're like, well, what's going on? Like, what's going on this whole time? But if you're like me and you watch the opening credits, you, you kinda, it kind of gives it away right off the bat. Which I can't take that away from the movie because even if, you know, I figure out a movie's ending, I don't let that ruin the movie for me. Now, some people, apparently, they knock points off for it. But that's not what I'm knocking points off this movie for. Because this movie goes, it, it, it's, it, it takes itself very serious. It's got a very serious tone and people kept talking about the campiness. I don't necessarily think there was much campiness. Now, the story was a bit far-fetched once you find out what's really going on. But it's kind of creative, even though it's taking elements from other films. Like, there was a scene from Carrie. There was stuff from The Evil Dead. Even had Sam Raimi's car. And then, what other? Uh, Highlander. Highlander. You know, they're staying at the apartments from Highlander. And then there was one other thing. Dead, uh, the, the Dark Half. Yeah. I don't know if you've all seen the movie The Dark Half, but it's kind of got a little element of the dark half. Like, there's a little bit of other horror movies sprinkled in here. It's not like they completely ripped off these movies, but they took elements from these movies to make a slightly original idea. Like, like you, you, honestly, you, some of the okay. shit in this movie, you ain't ever seen no shit like that before. But, uh, like, the transitioning from her being where she is to where the killings are happening, I thought that was really cool, even though the CGI, you know, is obvious CGI. But how the fuck are you going to just... You can't just practically do shit like that, so that's fine with me. I mean, I really don't know what bothered me about this movie, other than the fact that it was a bit silly. Like, once you figure out what's going on, or once they reveal what's going on, it's just... But, you know, then again, I grew up watching silly horror movies from the 80s, so this makes me feel like maybe there'll be a resurgence of fucking just nonsensical bullshit like because it was some nonsensical bullshit you know but it was played straight for the most part now let's talk about some of these characters there's you know madison our main character and then her sister uh sydney was it sydney or cindy it was either sydney or cindy i'm th I'm, I'm thinking sydney because you know horror references all kinds of horror references in this movie uh, i can't be the only one that noticed it but uh her sister is just drop dead gorgeous. I don't know who this actress is, but goddamn, you know what I mean. Uh, but anyway, so uh, there's these two detectives, and the one she reminds me of Wanda Sykes before she went completely fucking whatever happened to Wanda Sykes. But uh, I thought she was incredible. Like probably my favorite character in the movie was the uh, the. The, the female detective. I don't remember what her name was because, you know, that's just how I am. And then there was, uh, you know, Detective Heartthrob that this uh, crime scene investigator chick who was, like, just a little side character, but she stood out to me, too, because, like, she was just adorable as fuck and she had the biggest crush on uh, Detective Heartthrob and she was, uh, what we call her? Lonely Heart or something? I don't fucking know. Point is... The characters in this movie were great. I, 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 you know, they kept me invested in the movie, even though there was, like, once I started kind of, we kind of figured it out, and then we're like, yep, yep. See, it took 
some people 40 minutes to figure it out where it only took me 10 minutes to figure it out, which I hope that doesn't spoil it for you. But like I said, if you watch the opening credits, it's right there, plain as day, spelled out for you. But then when they do reveal what's going on, you're like, what in the goddamn fuck? And like, you said, there's another thing that made it kind of obvious by the way the killer moved. It was like, hold on, hold on a minute now, goddammit. Hold on a minute. Like I said, I, I, you know, I'm sure everybody's already seen this by now, but I, I don't feel like going into spoilers. If you know what happens, you know what happens. If you don't, watch the fucking movie and find out. Because apparently this movie's extremely divisive, which I don't see why it would be divisive. I enjoyed the movie. I will probably watch it again, but it's it's batshit crazy. And so yeah, I don't know. I have no fucking idea. I'd have to watch it again. See, I probably should have watched it again in preparation for this review. But I, you know, I come unprepared. You know, that's just, that's my style. But if I had to give this movie a rating, like a number, because you know you, you got to put a number on it, I'd, I'd probably. Oh my god, I'd hate to do it, but I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Like, it's definitely worth your time, but how many times is it worth your time? Because it's like, once you know what's going on, would you watch it again? That's, that's a toughie. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I could see there being a sequel, but I don't know how bad we need a sequel. Does that make sense? Does anything that I've said here today make any sense? Good, because that's how the movie is. Anyway, uh, if you've liked this nonsensical rambling, uh, please let me know by commenting, subscribing, liking, blah, 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 blah. And if I could borrow a dollar, I'd greatly appreciate it over here at www.patreon.com forward slash Drewski McGillicuddy. Uh, you know, keeps me in dog food. You know, I got got about them dogs, to their food. Oh, what else? Oh, yeah. Get the fuck out.